Hello and welcome to The Album Man. Coming out today, we have the hotly anticipated, yet rather controversial new album from the Prague extraordinaire Stephen Wilson, entitled To The Bone. This is his fifth album as a solo artist, and coming off the back of the incredible Hand Cannot Erase, the wonderful concept album from a couple of years ago, there have certainly been high expectations going into this record, and I reviewed that album very positively indeed uh, two years ago. But now Stephen has moved away from the classic 70s prog style that we're used to him exploring, and instead, onto the bone, tries to explore his pop influence, a word that is a bit of a, a bogeyman to many of us. Here he's exploring influences of Prince and Abba and Kate Bush, and as a result, many people are accusing him of having soared out as an artist. So let's explore to the bone, and we'll find out whether Stephen Wilson is indeed commercially bankrupt and is trying to get a top 20 single, or whether people just can't, aren't quite understanding the situation. In my opinion, this album can easily be divided into those songs which are rather easy for a fan of, of previous Stephen Wilson work to get into, and those songs which are, let's say, more challenging. To say that he goes all out with the pop influence styles some fans are peddling around comment sections and forums is just plain false. So we're going to take a look first at a couple of common criticisms that I'm hearing towards To The Bone, and we're going to kind of sort the fact from the fiction and look at the truth behind these really strong claims. Though most importantly of all, what about the notion that Stephen Wilson is selling out, that he's going pop and trying to get a hit song? Well, for that, we have to turn to the track called Permanating, and this is the song that really caused the shit to hit the fan in the Stephen Wilson fanbase. This is about as happy and jubilant and upbeat a song as a song can possibly be. It's a feel-good pop song of the summer without a Bollywood-inspired music video. That's not something you'd really imagine Stephen Wilson making five years ago after albums like Grace for Drowning and The Raven that refused to sing. So has Stephen really turned his back on prog for good? Is he trying to be a, a Lady Gaga or Beyonce? No. I mean, of course he's not. And I'd like to take some time to really explain, with particularly using Permanating as an example, why Stephen Wilson has not sold out, and why any claim that he has is just plainly false. Permanating is based around a simple, percussively played keyboard progression of about three chords, with a catchy earworm of a chorus. It has a big, electronically reverbed drum kit just dominating the mix, and it's almost like something you might find in a disco song. I mean, the drum kit honestly wouldn't feel too out of place in a Bee Gees song. And I've got a best when you play the song at louder volumes, it can almost hurt your ears how loud the drums are in this song. But what this shows is this is a Stephen Wilson song to dance to. That's not a phrase you'd associate with really anything else in his entire catalogue. This is a song inspired by ABBA, by Prince, by Tears of Fears, by the Electric Light Orchestra, 70s and 80s pop music. So do I like it? Well, not greatly, I have to be honest. While certain elements are very effective, such as the Beatlesque bridge and the simplistic yet rather emotive guitar solo, the melody I find to be rather forced and just lack that certain something special which those great pop artists of the 70s and 80s really possessed in filling their choruses with, uh, you know, great, great melodies. Instead, this feels more like a pale imitation, an homage, and not something that's really adding much in the way of originality of melody, or even something that's doing an amazing job of This is kind of Stephen Wilson's first stab at a track like this, so you can cut him some slack. But, you know, saying all this, I, I can't help but sing along to the chorus. I mean, it's not, it's, just, it's not a favourite of mine, and it is a weaker element on the album. Let me make something explicitly clear. I have no problem with Permanating as a song. I'm not against it on principle, and I don't believe Stephen Wilson sold out on this song. And now we're really gonna get into the heart of my argument. Now look, I am a huge Stephen Wilson fan, and fan of his material, so please do not take this as an insult to his material. There's the, there's the preface out of the way. Now while I would happily give something like The Raven That Refused to Sing from uh, what, 2013, a 9 out of 10, probably because it was so beautiful, so emotionally rich. Is The Raven That Refused to Sing really a progressive rock record? Now, I don't mean 
in the sense that it's Prague isn't taking from Genesis and yes, and Emerson like empowering gentle giants. I mean, is it progressive? Does it push the boundaries? I think the answer is no. What Stephen Wilson is brilliant at is distilling the essence of 70s prog rock of those great bands of old and including this into his own emotionally rich tapestry in a way that no one in the prog scene does as well as him. There is no question he's a master of his craft and without peer. You look at Opeth struggling through 70s prog records, which are certainly nice listens, but they're nothing particularly special records like Sorcerer's Pale Communion Heritage. They're not standouts of the genre. Whereas The Raven That Refused to Sing, Hank and Other Rays, and then we can go back into the Porcupine Tree catalogue, are indeed standouts of the genre. So it's worth looking at what it really means to be progressive. To me, it means to push the boundaries of music as an art form, to subvert expectation and to move in new directions. Now to the Bowen, it's like nothing he's done before overall. This has accessible melodies fused with his distinctive brand of aggressive guitar playing with electronic dabbling and even falsetto vocals on the same asylum as before. To those who say this is pop, I concur, this is pop but it's pop for the 70s and 80s. It's pop for an audience that doesn't exist anymore, a demographic that hasn't existed in 20, 30 years. If Stephen Wilson was making songs that sound like that Spanish one, Despertito, that's been getting popular, or Justin Bieber, then I'd be agreeing with you that he seems to be aiming at the charts and maybe just doing something for the money, because it seems quite unlikely that he would enjoy that type of auto-tuned pop music. But here is what I like to term the paradox of progressiveness at the core of people's reactions to, to the bone. That the so-called prog audience doesn't necessarily want something progressive. In fact, they are the people who have made prog a genre. And I would like to argue that in some ways, making prog a genre is oxymoronic. A genre is defined by a set of rules. And prog's intrinsic goal is to break rules, to go beyond those rules to diversify, to create, to innovate. But our expectations have made prog a strict genre of iteration, repetition, and let's be real, to some extent, stagnation. Stephen Wilson with To The Bone has released one of the most progressive albums of his career because he's thrown the textbook out the window. He's gone against what his fan base wants, going for something that he wanted to deliver. Short of releasing, I don't know, an album of instrumental jazz played on a synclavia or something, this is about the most progressive thing he could have done. To the Bone is daring in its subversion of the tropes of 70s prog that often permeate Stephen's music. Now that's not to say this album is genre defining, this is not OK Computer or In the Court of the Crimson King, far from it. It certainly has its clear influences, its clear stylistic choices which it uses to pay homage to an era that has been and has gone and that there aren't people making music like this at the moment. But the combination of that old school pop sound with Stephen's distillation of quintessential 70s prog creates an album for which there's nothing I can quite compare, certainly in the modern landscape. And I've had some people on Facebook say, this is music for kids. Well, any kid that likes this is one bloody cool cat to me. But still, going back to the main heart of the album, this does have songs that are very familiar to a seasoned Stephen Wilson veteran. Pariah, the duet with Ninette, certainly bears resemblance to Routine, and I didn't hear much outcry about that song on Hank and Not Erased. While Song of Unborn, it's not a million miles away from Happy Returns from the same Hank and Not Erased album, though each of their songs has a distinctive element to it. Pariah differentiates itself with the use of an arpeggiated synthesizer, culminating in a powerful guitar-driven crescendo that sounds to me halfway between, I don't know, My Bloody Valentine's Shoegaze and an anathema crescendo. While Song of Unborn has a distinctly upbeat and positive vibe to it that much of the material shares, Stephen here is addressing an unborn infant characterised with a subtle use of the heartbeat, as if you know, inside the, the mother's womb at the beginning of the song, and with an effective use of choir which kind of takes you by surprise. It's, you know, it does work to a certain degree and certainly does differentiate itself from other ballads that Stephen Wilson has done in the past. It doesn't just become another Stephen Wilson ballad. 
Though saying that, I do struggle to feel a real emotional connection with the song the same way I have with songs like Trains or Happy Returns. Instead, I kind of feel the song passing me by and just meandering through a pleasant soundscape instead of really captivating me. Still, I'm brought to another important point on the album, um, which is positivity, with Permeating's unabashed happiness and ecstasy, and Song of Unborn's message that life is worth living, pariahs that we should never give up. People seem to have got this impression stuck in their head that Stephen is gloomy and depressive, and yeah, most of his material does invoke such emotion but he should not be limited by a single emotion, by a single palette. An artist with as rich a you know, diversity in musical influence as Stephen, it doesn't surprise me that he wants to make jubilant, happy music, but again, subverting expectation, and that's the crucial takeaway from this record and from this review. So what about the album itself? Do I actually enjoy it after defending it so staunchly and passionately? It's not my favourite Stephen Wilson album. No, I don't like it as much as The Riven. I don't like it as much as Hank and Andres. I don't like it as much as Fear of a Blank Planet or In Absentia. But it's a grower. And it certainly starts to get to you. It's not without its flaws, but let's begin with the positives. So songs like The Same Asylum as before. This has a classically big Stephen Wilson chorus. Fantastic, heavy, in-your-face guitar. It's a straight-up rocker. And while Stephen's falsetto is, is a little weak and maybe a little out of place at the beginning, it's not as strong as vocal performance, it doesn't matter because it's not that prevalent in the song. Well, the best track is by far people who eat darkness, starting with a surprising line of I can hear you fuck your girlfriends through the wall, which, which is a, a bold move on Stephen's part lyrically, but like Sleep Together, this, um, from that's from the um, Fear of the Black Planet album, this has metal porcupine tree written all over it, and it's brilliant, who wouldn't want to hear Stephen Wilson go back to that porcupine tree metal with a strong, bold, distorted guitar riff with some beautiful accompanying vocals from Ninette. This is the song that every porcupine tree fan has been wanting for years, dark, melancholically, rhythmically driven, and coming in six minutes, it's spectacular. Another song that's worth noting is Detonation. At nine minutes, I guess, it's like the ancestral from Hank and Ollie Ray's on the album. Certainly structurally, as in the vocals are kind of in the first part, and then it's really instrumental for the rest of it, just as Ancestral was. And this is easily the most classically prog song on the album, changing time signatures and, you know, conforming to the typical prog trappings. Though it does go into a kind of funky little bass line, jazzy guitar part towards the end with some effective crescendos throughout. Just don't be put off by the sparse electronica of the album. Just don't be put off by the sparse electronica in the opening, kind of reminiscent of, I don't know, almost like Moonshape Paul type Radiohead. But this is an interesting and varied ride. While something like the title track reminds me deeply of the band Manson, you know, that 90s band who are kind of a bit Radioheady and are really, really cool, and now Paul Draper's back, so check out his album. I haven't actually listened to it yet, but. I'm really interested, and they have collaborated on a song, so this influence doesn't surprise me. And the lyrics were also written of Andy Partridge over XTC, and while it did take a few listens to click as a song, you'll find that this is a melodically rich and deep song when you really give it the chance, you go into it with an open mind. Look, there are negatives on the album. Song of I is symptomatic of, an, of a very subjective issue that I have with the record. That, well, execution-wise, I don't really have any issues, and production-wise, it's, it's Stephen Wilson, it's, it's great. At times, I do find that, particularly because of the heavy use of electronica, that to me it lacks some of that intangible emotional connection that I felt with most of his past material. And again, with the pop sensibilities, I can feel sometimes cold and disconnected from the songs, not like I'm an active emotional participant in them, but as if I'm just watching them drift by. Admittedly, these songs often have sections of emotional resonance, even if the whole song isn't, so Song of I has this lush orchestral arrangement uh, in the middle of it, but then the rest is electronica with pop sounding vocals that just to me lack nuance and emotional resonance. And Refuge has similar problems with its synth driven things and I don't know, almost Phil Collins y type big 80s drum beats at parts, but then it has this wonderful harmonica solo which you don't expect and which really kicks you in the face. In conclusion, this album is full of surprises around every corner. Some great, some meh, and some not so good. But overall, I'd say it's full of great surprises. It's certainly prog, and it's worth listening to for a seasoned Stephen Wilson fan. Though to a newcomer, 
I'd recommend delve into the Porcupine Tree catalogue or maybe something like The Raven That Refused to Sing before you go onto this album. Stephen here has delivered a melodically rich, diverse and pop-inspired record. I know it's not my favourite and it's not an album that I feel that I connect to as much as his other stuff. It's certainly worth a listen. I'm going to give this album a 7.5 out of 10. It's an enjoyable record, but just not one that captivates me quite as much as others. This has been the Album Man. Thanks for watching. Can't wait to subscribe and as usual, long live rock and roll.